Hey everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level, and welcome to this final video in my rigging node series. In this video, we're going to rig this robotic arm, and in this file, which you can just download from my Gumroad account, I have two robotic arms. So we're going to rig the first one using rigging nodes, and then we're going to take all of our work and transfer it to the second one immediately, so we can quickly rig the second one. First thing I do is just drag up the timeline, just flip it to rigging nodes. Make sure you have rigging nodes installed as well. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description for the add-on, and in some of the introduction videos, I just talked about how to actually install this. So right away, I'm just going to add a new node network, and I'm going to add an input, uh, input armature. Again, to create new nodes, I'm just hitting Shift A to add them in here. Right away, I'm also going to add a flow control node, and it's going to be an execute. I'm just going to plug this in and set preview. Now, nothing's going to happen right now because I don't have an input armature. I need to make a new one. I'm just going to click New, and if I set preview, that's going to work. There's my new rig right there. Uh, let's do a couple things. I'm going to add an input a collection and a name. So I can hold Shift to select on both of these. I'm just going to click OK. The name is just going to be Arm Rig. 01, and the collection is just going to be rig. Now, if you look in my outliner, I have arm rig 01 and my rig collection. All right, for this one, I actually want to lay out a couple of bones first, and that's the main deform bones moving the arms. Uh, I could do this with math, but I'm going to do it with the input armature option here, this edit option, just scale this bone. And just to start, I'm just going to move them all into location. So I'll move this here, just turn off snap. I'll put this one here. I'll just duplicate this over. I'm just eyeballing their location right now. I'm going to go back through and hit E to bring out this one. I'll just duplicate this up. I'll just scale it down to make the finger. I'll hit E to extrude another one. I'll just duplicate this down. And I'll bring this down here and just hit E to extrude another one. These two as well, I'm just going to parent up to this bone right here. With these bones here, I'm just going to name them really quick. This one, I'm just going to call uh, arm base. Dot one. This one's just going to be arm.001. I can just copy that name to the other arm here. This is going to be finger top.001. I'll just copy that over. And I'll do finger bottom. And I'll just copy that name over. Again, I'm able to make all these changes because I clicked on that little uh, pencil icon right there so I can actually make my edits. So I want to do one more thing. I'm going to flip to object mode and I just want to get some actual pivot locations, which are all embedded in the geometry here. If I select on this one, do Shift S, cursor to selected, click back on my rig, click on this so I can go back to edit mode, hit Shift S, selection of cursor, that bone's in the correct spot. I'm just going to repeat that for the other pieces. Just click on this one, Shift S, cursor to selected, and go to my rig, click on the edit pencil button here, do shift S, selection of cursor. Just gonna go through the other ones and do this. It's important that you always go back to edit mode using that option there. If you were to go through edit mode through the normal convention in Blender, you would actually break the nodes because it's kind of like scripting something. The script doesn't care what you do in the 3D viewport. Okay, I just have a couple more pieces here. And I'll just eyeball this top finger here. And I just gotta do this bottom one here. So it's pretty quick to actually get these pieces in place, uh, especially when the model has the pivots baked right into them. Um, now that I've done this, I could zero the model, but I'll just finish this off. I'm gonna do one last thing on the two bottom fingers here. The first thing I'm gonna do is just flip on the axes so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna select on the two bottom fingers. Right now they're actually in negative Y um, in their bone roll, so I'm gonna flip them to positive Y here. Now when I flip to pose mode and rotate these on one axis, when I hit R and then Z twice on the local axis, they're gonna go the same direction with each other. And we'll get more into that when I add controls later on. Okay, so I've laid out my bones here and I still have my network working here. And last thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna to go to edit mode one more time, select on this bone and just parent it to this one here. I could do that with nodes as well too, but it's just easy just to kind of add it in here. Okay, let's add some nodes. So in my node tree here, I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna add a bone, I'm gonna add a root bone, sort of a, a god control at the bottom that's gonna move the entire object in the rig. I'm just gonna name this root.001, 
soon as I name it, I get that bone. Now it's looking down the y axis, or my arm is kind of looking down the x axis here. So here in the vector for the tail, I'm going to put the x at 1 and the y at 0. And I can even come in here and adjust this at any time to get a different uh, location for that. Let's add a parent as well. So I'm going to do bone and I'm going to set bone property. I can just expand this. Now I can get a drop down of all my bones here. I want to set a property of the arm base. My input, I'm going to set the parent. So I click OK here, and my parent is going to be the root. And I can just click and drag that into there. I don't need to actually call the root thing. I can just connect it with nodes. Now if I flip to pose mode, oh, i got to do set preview first, flip to pose mode, and I can test out that parent. Perfect. That's working well. Let's keep moving along. I'm going to add one more bone here, and this is going to be my IK handle. So I'm just going to call it hand IK.001. And again, it's going to add right here. I want to position this bone dynamically right here at the end of this finger, so it's always here by default. Um, so no matter which kind of robotic arm I have, it's always going to show up there. So I want to grab this bone's tail location. So I'm going to get a bone property. I'm going to shift A, bone, and I'm going to get bone property right here. I'm going to plug my rig into it. The bone that I want to access here is arm 002, which was this one right here. And I'm going to add an output. I want the tail. That's going to give me a vector. Now I can plug the tail of that bone right into the head of my new IK handle here. And if I set preview, you'll notice that that jumped up to there. So I want this to always sort of be um, right here in space, like always be at the correct location. So that no matter where the, the arm here is, it's always going to be dynamically creating itself right there. So I'm going to do shift A and I'm going to come to operators. I'm going to come to math and I'm going to do an add and it's going to be on a vector here. So I'm going to flip it to vector and I'm going to plug the tail into it. And I just want to add the X by, let's do one to start and I'll plug that into the tail and set preview. Cool. So that's positioned it there. Uh, let's just bring this down a little bit and now I can dynamically change this at any time. One last thing I want to do with this bone is add an input, and I want to add a parent to my hand IK bone. I'll click OK, and I'm going to make the parent of this the arm base node right here. So it's just going to parent dynamically to that. OK, let's add a constraint now. So I'm going to go to bone, and I'm going to go add constraint. I'm going to create an IK constraint from this bone right here to that hand bone I just created. And it's going to look down two bones on the chain, and it's going to resolve at this parent here. So first thing I need to do is choose which type of constraint I want. So it's going to be a kinematic constraint. The bone is going to be arm.002, which is this one right here. I'm going to add some inputs. I'm going to add both subtargets. It's a little confusing because it doesn't tell you which subtarget is for the main target. So I'm just going to add them both right now and experiment to see which one is going to hook up to the target. I'm also going to add a chain length because you need to input that as well too. And I'm going to click OK. So the target is the rig, so I can just drag this into here. My sub-target is going to be the hand IK, which is actually this bone right here, so I can just drag it over. And the chain length is going to be 2. Now I can set preview and actually test this right now, and it's not working, nothing's happening, because I believe I set the wrong target. Yeah, you see that? This is empty. So this sub-target right here is a broken one. I need it to plug into this one down here, and then I bet you it'll work. Yep, so if I flip to pose mode, cool. There's my IK working right now. So now I have a really basic IK chain. Um, I'm going to come back to here. I can edit this as well if I flip to item and actually delete that first sub-target here. So under hand IK sub-target, I can just get rid of that one because it's not needed. Again, I might even reach out to the developer about that one just to change the name of one to uh, main target and pull sub target. Okay, so let's keep going along. Let's add a couple shapes to this rig. I'm just going to do shift A. I'm going to do bone. I'm going to do set bone property. I'm going to flip to pose mode and I'm going to add an input and I'll do custom object and custom shape scale and click OK. For this, I want to do the root bone and it's not going to give me anything here unless I actually set preview on it. It's actually going to fail because it can't find a bone. So I'm going to do the root here. Uh, in my viewport, I'm just going to do shift A. I'm going to add a circle. Just move it over to here. I can just rename this to shape root as well. 
And then in here, I can just add it um, shape root and set preview. Now it's not showing up because my custom shape scale, I have to put that to one as well. There's my root shape. So I'm gonna keep going along. I'm gonna add another one, bone, uh, set bone property. And I'll just flip it to pose mode again. I can add an input. So I'll do custom object, custom shape scale, and I'll click okay. This one is gonna be on the arm base.001. And I'm gonna create a new object called circle. I can just rename this to shape base. I can just move it over. So I'll add it to my base here, shape base, and I'll just put the size to one. Now it's rotated 90 degrees, so I can just grab the circle here and just rotate it on the Y by 90 degrees. So now I have that nice shape and I can just scale it to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more. I could loop through this, but I'm just gonna do it manually for this. It's kind of just repetition of the same thing. I'm gonna set a bone property. I'm gonna to flip to pose mode, add an input, do the custom shape object and custom scale. I'm gonna do this on the IK hand. It can just have the root shape as well too. It can be the exact same as that one. I can just scale it up from here. All right, so I wanna add a shape to the fingers here. So I'm gonna do this with a loop node though, just cause they're all gonna get the same one. So I'm gonna do a loop. I'm gonna add a new one and I click tab to go into here and actually set it up. So I'm gonna move my group output, my input over here, and I'm gonna add a bone set bone property. So I'm gonna flip this to pose and I'm gonna add an input to the custom object and custom shape scale. Just click okay down here. So I'm gonna make the armature an output, but within here I'm gonna build my array. So my list, so I'm gonna do array, I'm gonna go make array and I'm gonna make this a string array. And I'm gonna add a socket and I can add four and I'm gonna do finger top dot zero zero one, finger top dot zero zero two, finger bottom dot zero zero one and finger bottom dot zero zero two. From my make array and my loop index, I'm gonna add a new node array and I'm gonna do a get so the first node into here is my empty array, and then the index is the index I want it to get from, the loop index I'm looping through. This is gonna get plugged into my bone right here. And then my armature is my output. Now within here, I'm just gonna put my custom shape to one, and let's actually make a custom shape right now. So in viewport, I'm just gonna add a circle, and I can just call this shape finger. And I can even add it here. And we're gonna come back and change it around a little bit uh, later on. But let's check if all of this worked now. So I can plug my armature into it. I can plug this into my output. And my end index is actually three. Cool, that worked. So, oh, I need to add one more, sorry, not three, four. Um, I'm gonna grab the finger control though, and I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis, and then just scale it down. Cool, that's looking really nice right there. I can just move this over. So on my armature, I still have axes turned on. I'm just gonna turn that off and I can get a look of what my rig is looking like now. I can test that out. Yep, that's looking nice. I want to hide these two joints right here and I'm gonna do that with a, there's a special node called set bone layer, which I can just plug into here. And it's gonna be arm, Again, if you don't see your drop down here and just click set preview, it's gonna fail, but it'll give you that drop down. So no arm.001, and I want to be in layer one, and you'll see that over here, it's moved to this layer. It's pretty cool how it automatically updates. I think I can do control C, control V to duplicate this over, and I can do arm002, and it's gonna get the same thing. So now I have a really nice node setup where I've built a simple rig that I can now rotate these pieces, I have a really cool little IK setup, but let's go through and let's parent some of these objects up. I don't need to do this in the nodes. I can do this all in the viewport. Okay, so let's go through and quickly parent them up. And I just select on the object and shift click on the rig and do control P, bone. Make sure your lock object mode modes is turned off. That makes it really easy just to select on a piece, shift click on the rig and pose mode and parent your bone. If that option is turned on, you won't be able to do this. Um, 
What I'm doing here has nothing really to do with rigging nodes, it's just how I'm connecting the objects to the rig. I'm just going through and doing control P, bone, and this one, control P, bone. And I'm just about done here. Cool, so now let's test this out and I can move this and I get my rig. So now that I have this really nice node network, I can do a couple things. I'm gonna turn off arm01 here and turn on arm02. I'm gonna select everything here and do control C to copy it. And up here, I'm gonna make a new node tree and I'm gonna do control V to paste it. I'm gonna change the name of this to arm rig02. And I'm gonna to come to the end and set preview. Now I have two rigs in my output here. Let's do a couple more things. Let's come all the way back to the beginning and edit this rig. So I can grab this pivot to right here. I can move this down to here and I can move the hand location down. Uh, I'm gonna quickly do what I did before actually now and just flip to object mode, select on the pieces and just do shift S cursor to selected and then just snap these into place. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and do these now. And just like I did on the other rig, I'm just gonna eyeball the finger points here and get them into place. So I've got a different arm, a different rig, and I'll just hide this one up here as well too. And I can go through all my nodes and do set preview, and I will get the exact same output with this new pivot. Now, if I grab these pieces, I can quickly parent them up as well, just like I did with the other rig. So I'll go through and parent them all to the joints here. So I've done that and I can move this. And now I have two robotic arms that are similar that use the exact same rig. And it took me no time at all to rig the second one to get the exact same mechanics. And again, this is just the beginning of this. You could have also grouped all of this together and made a group note out of it. So it was different every time. You could have done this in multiple files. You could have keep adding to this and making this more dynamic. Uh, this is just an example of how far you could take it with one rig which has a similar setup. So now both of these have their own rig and it didn't take me too long to actually build them with nodes. So just some final thoughts about rigging nodes. Uh, it's a great tool if you have to do anything procedurally, if you want to build something more with a node network, if you like sort of visual scripting as well, like something like blueprints it almost reminds me of, or almost like Houdini where you're setting your preview flag along and you're kind of just building through your node network. Um, if you were building hundreds of robotic arms for a project or characters and you wanted the mechanics to be all the same, I think it'd be a useful setup. Like say you wanted to build one eyelid setup and have it as a node network, you could do that on a project. If you're building one character though for one project, that's where rigging nodes might not be useful. It might be quicker for you to just build it by hand, get the rig done, and get the animation at the door. It's a tool that's built to help with rigging. It's not something to replace traditional rigging in Blender. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you guys would like to see more rigging node examples. I can keep going into more dynamic things and it can get pretty complicated, but pretty cool pretty quick. A uh, big thank you to my patrons for supporting me and this video. Uh, it's because of them that I can make these videos and head on over there if you want exclusive content, early access, and even some behind the scenes. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>